It's not apples to apples. That old saying sure rings true when trying to compare the expected progeny differences, or EPDs, of bulls from two different breeds. And that's why the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center analyzes breed differences and provides comparison tools. We've been uh, releasing the crossbreed EPD adjustment factors from Clay Center for almost 25 years now. But uh, this year, for the first time, we're including carcass weight as one of the traits that are being analyzed with that so that uh, commercial producers will have a new tool to compare their animals across breed for another economically relevant trait. Changes in cattle marketing help spur the addition. I think we're getting more and more commercial producers that are retaining ownership. So yearling weight and weaning weights are no longer the economically important trait. Now they want to know what they're getting paid for uh, as their base price on the grid. So this and marbling and, and, and back fat will all be a good component for them to help sell their cattle better. The adjustments are calculated back to an Angus base, and many extension programs have spreadsheets to help producers make sense of it all. The historical database allows Keen and his team to spot trends. Over the last few years, we've, we've really continued to see where breeds have been selecting hard. Just take Angus, for instance. Um, partly yearling weight now with carcass weight available have very, very strong trends in growth, um, making up to a pound and a half to two pounds on average per year. And it's brought Angus into a competitive position with several of the other continental breeds being equal in yearling weight and equal in carcass weight, basically, while, uh, while still maintaining a nice birth weight at the same time. Many breeds have made improvements in different areas. These adjustments give farmers and ranchers a chance to see how their sires stack up industry-wide to make more informed genetic selections. I'm Bob Cervera.